In this video, we'll discuss some strategies for writing equations of lines that are perpendicular bisectors. So to start with, what is a perpendicular bisector? Well, as the name might suggest, the word perpendicular tells us that we're going to have some right angles being formed. And the word bisector indicates to us that we're going to do some splitting into two equal or congruent parts. If you want a formal definition of a perpendicular bisector, a perpendicular bisector is going to be a line or part of a line that passes through the midpoint of a segment in such a way that um, right angles are formed. So again, any line or part of a line passing through a segment's midpoint and at the same time forming right angles. So in number one, they're asking us to write an equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment that joins the points A and B with the given coordinates. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot those points and draw that line segment. What this does for me is it gives me a very good visual understanding of exactly what we're working with or looking at here. Okay, so there's line segment AB. It's a nice horizontal line segment. And we want to know the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the perpendicular bisector in there. I know the perpendicular bisector is going to have to split this guy into two equal parts. So there's the midpoint forming two parts of three units long each. And it's going to have to chop this guy in half, and at the same time, it's going to have to be perpendicular. So the perpendicular to a horizontal line segment is going to be a vertical line segment. So there's the picture of what my perpendicular bisector looks like. Now I have to go through and I have to write its equation. Well, this line passes through the x-axis where the x value is equal to 4. So the equation of this line is x equals 4. Now, if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, let's take a look at the coordinates of some points on this line. This line has some coordinates, or this line has some points on it with coordinates 4, 0, 4, 3, 4, negative 3. In each and every case, the x value is equal to 4, making its equation x equals 4. So it really doesn't matter how you remember to write the equation of a vertical line, as long as you can write the equation of a vertical line and a horizontal line, you're in good shape. All right, but what about what happens if we are given a segment that's not perfectly vertical or not perfectly horizontal? How can we use what you've learned so far about geometry in order to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector? Well, I'm going to go back to our knowledge about perpendicular lines. If we recall a discussion about slope and perpendicular lines, we know that any time two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are going to be negative reciprocals. So that's the first thing I'm going to look at is slopes. And in doing so, again, I'm going to recall that any time two lines are perpendicular, their slopes are negative reciprocals. And then that bisector, I'm going to remember, it cuts into two equal parts. And the point on the graph that's going to do that cutting into two equal parts is going to be the midpoint. So I know that in order for something to be the perpendicular bisector, the first criteria that it needs to pass is that it has to have a slope that's a negative reciprocal of the given line segment. And the second criteria that it needs to pass is it's got to go through the midpoint of that given line segment. So slope and midpoint are going to be critical to our discussion, to our writing uh, equations of perpendicular bisectors. Once again, when I get down to number two, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot the points so that, again, I have a good visual picture of exactly what it is that I'm trying to work with here. So there's point A, and there's point B. Okay. 
So the perpendicular bisector or any line that's perpendicular to line AB, or sorry, line segment AB, is going to have to have a slope that's the negative reciprocals of whatever AB slope is. So the first thing I'm going to do is go find the slope of line segment AB. And always, whenever I'm using a formula, the first thing that I do is write the formula down on my paper. The second thing I do is show my substitution, so I have to indicate which values I'm plugging into this formula. In this case, I'm using 6 and 2 for the y's, 3 and 5 for the x's, and then I need to grab my calculator and I need to do some calculations. And when I plug that into my calculator, I find that the slope of line segment AB is negative 2. But I want the slope of the line that's perpendicular to that. So my slope of a line perpendicular, in order to be negative reciprocal, it would have to have the opposite sign and then be the reciprocal. So the slope I want of a line that's perpendicular is going to be positive a half. I also know that this line is going to have to pass through the midpoint of line segment AB. So again, if I'm going to use a formula, the very first thing I need to do is write it down. The second thing I need to do is indicate which values I'm substituting into that formula. In this case, my x values are 3 and 5. And to average two x values means to add them together and divide by 2. My y values are 6 and 2. To average two y values together means add them together, divide by 2. And then I need to calculate. So it looks like this perpendicular bisector is going to pass through the midpoint and it's going to have a slope of positive a half. So now I'm just going to use my point slope formula in order to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector. y subtract the y coordinate that I want, which is 4, is equal to the slope, 1 half, times x subtract my x coordinate that I want, which is 4. Now if you're, you can leave your answer right like that and you are done. If you're one of those people who still feels more comfortable finding y-intercepts and putting your equation in the form y equals mx plus b, you're totally right to do so. And you can also write this equation as y equals 1 half x plus 2. The choice is totally yours. Both are perfectly acceptable. Both are perfectly correct. All right, so that is... Um, in a nutshell, the information that you need to be aware of on perpendicular bisectors. As always, I do want you to take some time to think and reflect on what you think are the most important ideas that you need to recall from the video. And again, put this in your own words. Make it meaningful and relevant to you. And then see if you can use what you know to answer the questions on page 18. And if you know that if you can successfully answer the questions, you've gotten what you needed to out of the video, and if those questions are tough for you, you know that you probably want to go back and revisit. Now down in number three, this is a little bit different. It's asking for distance. So just so you know, distance is not a topic I covered in this uh, video, but distance is something that you should recall from earlier in the unit. So if you're having a hard time with number three, you might want to revisit the video on distance or maybe even the notes that you took about distance at that time.